All right, everybody, welcome back to Newton's Laws, Conceptual Physics. Today, we're still talking about the second law, but we're doing a little bit of, I guess, harder problems. And we're using uh, one of the past chapters, uh, kinematics, the kinematic formulas. So here's just a little, like a little refresher. If you want to pause the button and uh, look at the kinematic formula for what acceleration is equal to, um, please do that. But I'm moving on. Okay. So first example here, three people push on a boat that is 752 kilograms. The boat float next to the dock. Each of the people push on the boat with 80.5 newtons of force parallel to the dock. What is the acceleration of the boat if they all push in the eastern direction? Okay, so for part A, we're looking at this diagram here because they're all pushing to the right or east. Um, so let's just kind of look at how that's going to work. So A here. So I'm going to be doing the formula for Newton's second law. The sum of all forces is equal to mass times acceleration. So let's think about how many forces are acting on this boat here. Well, we see that three forces, force one, force two, and force three. So I'm just going to do that. And they're all going to the right. So I'm just doing force one plus force two plus force three is equal to the mass of the boat times whatever the acceleration of the boat is. And they're each pushing it with 80.5 newtons. So I'm going to do 80.5 plus 80.5 plus 80.5. And we know that the mass of the boat is 752. And then we can find what the acceleration of the boat is equal to. Um, so let me do put this in my calculator. I'm just going to do 80.5 times 3. And I get... 241.5 newtons is equal to 752 times the acceleration. So then I'm going to just do 241.5 divided by 752. And then I have, I see that the acceleration is equal to 0 0.32 meters per second squared. That is how much the boat will accelerate while these people are pushing on it. Okay, part B. It says, let me just do this here. Part B, what is the magnitude and direction of the boat's acceleration if two of the people push in the west direction and one person pushes in towards the east? So now we're looking at this diagram here. This person here is pushing to the right and these two people pushing to the left or west and east. Okay. I'm pretty much doing the same thing. I'm doing the sum of all forces is equal to mass times acceleration. But these people are now pushing in different directions. So I'm doing F1 is positive. So I'm going to leave that as positive. F2 is pushing to the left, so I'm going to do minus F2. And F3 is also pushing to the left, so I'm going to do minus F3 is equal to the mass of the boat times the acceleration of the boat. Okay, so 80.5 minus 80.5 minus 80.5 is equal to the mass of the boat, 752 times acceleration of the boat. Okay, so math is simple. These two kind of cancel out with each other, so negative 80.5 is equal to 752 times the acceleration of the boat. So I'm just going to do that negative 80.5 divided by 752, bringing the 752 to the other side. And I get the acceleration is equal to negative 0 0.11 meters per second squared. And that negative is telling me that while these all three of these people are pushing, it's going to be accelerating in the leftward direction. And that should make sense. If they're all pushing with the same amount of force and two people are pushing to the left, it should be going to the left. Okay, um, next one over here. If all the people push in the same direction for two seconds, okay, so again, we're looking at the first scenario. What is the speed of the boat after they stop pushing? So they're pushing for two seconds. Uh, and then after they stop pushing, how fast is the boat now going? Okay. So for part C, uh, this is where we're using kinematics. So we should know when they're all pushing the same direction, there's an acceleration of 0 0.32 meters per second squared. So I'm going to be writing that down, 0 0.32 meters per second squared. Uh, we know they're going to be pushing for two seconds, two seconds. And then uh, we know that at the very beginning, before this boat is getting pushed, it's not moving. So we should know that the initial velocity is zero. And then what we're looking for is we want to know what the speed of the boat is after they've been pushing for two seconds. So we're looking for V final. Okay. 
So we're, we're using these kinematic formula to find what V final is. And if we kind of go back, we can use this equation here to figure that out, okay? It's derived from this original equation. All right, so let's do that. V final is equal to V initial plus A T. Uh, v initial is zero, acceleration is 0.32, T is two. Uh, and I can do this math in my head. It's going to be equal to 0 0.64 meters per second. Okay, so after they've been pushed for two seconds, that boat's going to be going 0 0.64 meters per second. Okay, hope that makes sense. There was a lot of work there, but hopefully it was okay. And if not, watch it back. Okay, moving on. Okay, Tonathan is playing with his favorite box, Carl, which he pushes. Carl has a mass of 10 kilograms. If the box starts at rest and reaches a speed of 6 meters per second in 3 seconds, ignore friction, how much force did Tonathan push on Carl? Okay, so what are we looking for? We're looking for how much is Tonathan pushing on Carl. So we're looking for what this force applied is equal to. Okay. Uh, but it seems like, oh, there's nothing about forces. How are we going to figure this out? But what we should know is we have the initial speed uh it starts at rest we know we have the final speed six meters per second and the time and we should know we should be able to figure something out here that'll help us find the force so i'm going to write this all out initial velocity is zero final velocity is six meters per second uh it takes three seconds to reach that six meters per second then what what's going to help us what can we find here that's going to help us find the force that's going to be acceleration. What is acceleration equal to? So I'm going to use that formula. Acceleration is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by time. So I'm going to do 6 minus 0 divided by 3. And I know 6 divided by 3 is just equal to 2 meters per second squared. Okay, so we know that's how much the box is accelerating. So... If we know the acceleration, we should also know that the sum of all forces is equal to mass times acceleration. So there's no friction in the x direction. Maybe I should just do the x to make it a little more simple. So in the x direction, there's only one force. That's the force applied. So I know that the force applied is equal to the mass of the box, which is 10 kilograms, times the acceleration, which we just found, 2. So now I can find that the force applied, how much Tonathan is pushing, is 20 newtons. Okay. And these uh, these problems that are like kinematics with Newton's laws are usually two steps. A lot of times you're going to be trying to find acceleration first, and then you're going to be using that to try to find force, or the other way around. But a lot of times there is like this two-step process, which makes it a little bit harder. Okay, moving on. A constant net force acts on an object. Describe the motion of the object. Um, A, constant acceleration. B, constant speed. C, constant velocity. D, constant acceleration. Okay, so a constant net force acts on an object. Describe the motion of the object. So let's say, you know, there's a force applied on this thing of 5 Newton and there's no friction. Okay, so what does that mean? Um, is there... Uh, let's kind of look at this. Is it going at a constant speed? It shouldn't be going at a constant speed because if there's a net force acting on this, that means the net force is equal to mass times acceleration, meaning it's accelerating. Okay, so not a constant speed. Also won't be a constant velocity because again, it's getting faster and faster and faster or it's accelerating. Okay, uh, now these two are right here, constant acceleration or increasing acceleration. We should know that, yes, it is getting faster and faster and faster, but it's not like the force is getting pushed more and more. If the force was getting pushed more and more, that means the acceleration would be getting more and more. But since the force is a constant, that means the acceleration will also be constant. So it's A here. All right, let's do this example here. Tonta is having so much fun that he invites his other friend, Sally, who is another box, to come play with them. Tonathan pushes them with a force of 50 newtons, and the boxes start to accelerate at 1.3 meters per second squared, ignoring friction. If one of the boxes has a mass of 22.6 kilograms, what is the mass of the other box? Okay, let's uh, let's just kind of write things out. Let's say this bottom box is 22.6 
kilograms. It doesn't really specify, so we're just going to say that. Uh, Tonton is pushing both of these boxes uh, with the force applied of 50 newtons. And they are both accelerating at a rate of 1.3 meters per second squared. There's no friction. Great. So part A here, we're going to be doing the sum of all forces is equal to mass times acceleration. And since we're kind of talking about the x direction, I'm just going to put this sub x here. Okay. And in the x direction, there's only really one force. That's the force applied. So force applied is equal to the mass of the boxes, both the boxes. So I'm just going to put mass time, mass sub one and two box. That means like math, the box of one and two times the acceleration of both box one and two. Okay. Uh, you don't, you know, these sub things don't really matter, but it just helps me to stay organized. So the force applied there, he's pushing both of these boxes with a 50. We know that one of the boxes is 22.6 kilograms, but we don't know what the other one is. So I'm just going to leave it as we don't know what the combined mass is. So I'm just going to leave this as mass M1 plus mass uh, M2. Uh, but we do know that they both accelerate at a rate of 1.3 meters per second squared. So I can figure out what the combined masses are. I'm going to do 50, bring the 1.3 to the other side. So 50 divided by 1.3, and I get 38. 0.46 uh, kilograms. But remember, this isn't the answer. This is how much they both, the mass of both of them. So to figure out what the mass of the other box is, I'm just going to do 38.46 minus 22.6. Okay. And let's see what this is. Minus 22.6. And I get 15.86 kilograms. Yeah. Now, part B, explain how the acceleration would change if the unknown mass was less than what was calculated. So let's say, okay, so we know, we know this bottom box is 22.6, but let's say this second box isn't 15.86, let's say it's 2 kilograms. What we should know is uh, if it was less and if it was being pushed with the same 50 newtons, that means it would ex uh, these two boxes would accelerate more because there's less mass. If the mass decreases, then the acceleration would increase. Okay? And that should make sense. If something is lighter and you're pushing it with the same force, it's going to be a lot easier to accelerate it or change its motion. Okay, moving on. Example 18. Billy notices how much fun Tom is having and decides to join him. They both simultaneously start pushing a five kilogram box and push on it in opposite directions. If Bully pushes with a force of 16 newtons to the left and the box accelerates toward him at 1.25 meters per second squared, which push and push pushes with more force? What is the magnitude of the force Tonton pushes with? Okay, let's kind of draw this out here. Uh, maybe I'll use different colors. So Billy, uh, they blah, 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 the, uh, Billy pushes with a force of 16 newtons to the left. Okay, so we're going to say this is Billy because he's pushing it to the left. And I'm going to call this the force of Billy. And this is 16 newtons. I'll use a different color. Let's use, um, no, not yellow, blue. Uh, maybe I should have done that. And then I'm going to say the force of Tonathan. We don't know what that is. Okay, so this is Tonathan. Tonathan. Okay. Uh, which person pushes with more force? So let's see. If Billy pushes with the force of 16 newtons to the left and the box accelerates toward him. So what this is saying is the box that is accelerating this way at a rate of 1.25 meters per second squared. So if, that, if the box is going that way, what would you guys say uh, who is pushing with more force part A? Uh, you would probably say it's Tonathan, and then you would be correct, because if it's accelerating to the right, that means that there's more force that's going to the right. Part B is now, what is the magnitude of the force Tonathan is pushing with? Okay, part B. So I'm just doing the sum of all forces is equal to mass times acceleration. And let's, again, look in the x direction, because that's the way it's accelerating. So I'm going to say uh, force of uh, Billy. Oh, maybe I'll just start with force of Tonathan because he's going to the right. 
uh, minus forcibility, because his is going to the left, is equal to the mass of the box times the acceleration of the box. So force of Tonathan, we don't know. Force of Billy, 16 newtons left. The mass of the box is 5, and the acceleration is going to the right 1.25 meters per second squared. Okay, let's simplify things. Minus 16 is equal to 5 times 1.25, 6.25. I'm going to bring this 16 to the other side, so 6.25 plus 16. So force of Tonathan is equal to 22.25 newtons. Okay? And we confirm that uh, Tonathan is pushing with more force. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. I hope that was helpful. Uh, I'll see you with the next one where we start talking about vertical motion. We've been doing everything in the X direction, but not really in the Y direction. So pretty similar, but a little bit different. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.